It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. And I'm glad you got your news on. It is the news for week commencing May 12, 2024. And this week, an in-depth look at the WIA AGM and the Bundaberg Expo, that by President Scott. The next big event in Australia happens in VK7. That's in November. And good news from Alara. But wait, there is much, much, much more in this edition of News from the Wireless Institute of Australia. I'm Editor Graham, VK4 Baker Baker. Who listens to radio? Hi, I'm Graham, VK3 GRK in sunny Bendigo. I'm David, VK4 Delta November. I'm Giles, VK5 Golf Kilo. Brad Peters, VK6 BAP. Hello, this is Luke, VK3 Hotel Juliet. Steve, VK4 SJH. This is WA President Scott Williams, VK3KJ, and welcome to all listeners wherever you might be to the national news broadcast this week. Wow, what a huge past week it's been with the WAA convention, an AGM taking place in Bundaberg last weekend on Saturday the 4th and Sunday the 5th of May. The WAA convention this year was held in conjunction with the Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club, and what a stellar job they did in hosting the event. We kicked off on Friday night with the opening of the convention and my thanks goes out to Mayor Helen Blackburn for speaking and officially opening the convention. We then settled into some networking drinks and dinner for those people that stayed. On Saturday, the convention got underway at the local multiplex centre and in addition to the great range of commercial exhibitors, there was a ham fest and a great range of presentations and talks in one of the lecture rooms. The Saturday night was the gala dinner with around 70 people in attendance and then the highlight was a live cross to the International Space Station, November Alpha 1 Sierra Sierra, who interacted with a range of Bundaberg High School students. The students got to ask a whole range of questions and it was truly a unique and memorable occasion. A thanks goes out to RS coordinator Shane Lynn, VK4 KHZ, and also to Martin Diggins, VK6MJ, who established the contact and then patched the audio through to Bundaberg. On Sunday, the WIA GM took place in the morning and there was all the normal proceedings. The WIA announced that it had recorded a small surplus for the year ending the 30th of December 2023 of $10,492 and closed with a net asset position of 475,186. This also included a $20,000 provision for additional IT system development and some additional marketing and promotional expenses. One of the highlights of the AGM was the membership granting honorary life membership to Robert Broomhead, VK3DN. Robert has been a significant contributor to the WIA for over 35 years and his recognition was very fitting indeed. There was also a long list of awards presented and further information will be published shortly on the WIA website. Some of the awards presented were President's Commendation, Dr Kevin Johnson, VK4UH. President's Commendation, Terry Moles, VK5TM. President's Commendation, Sam DeLitt, VK1 DXA. The Brenda Edmonds Award went to the Ham College, VK6 HC. A Technical Excellence Award to Andrew McCollum, VK3 FS. The Chris Jones Award went to Peter Cousins, VK3 BFG. And the Michael J. Owen Distinction Medal went to Alan Shannon, VK4 SN. Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH, the WIA Editor-in-Chief of the AR Magazine and Publications Committee, presented the following WIA Publication Awards. They were an Encouragement Award to Alex Cherry, VK2MV, an Encouragement Award to Rob Streeter, VK3BRS, the Hingenbotham Award to Will McGee, vk 6 
UU, the Hingenbotham Award to Phil Waite, VK2ASD, the L. Shawsmith Award to Glenn Alford, VK3CAM, and the L. Shawsmith Award to Peter Wolferton, VK3RV. There was then a technical award presented to Jim Tregellis, VK5JST, another technical award to Lou De Stefano, VK3AQZ, and a technical award to Dale Hughes, VK1DSH. The WIA AGM was attended by around 70 individuals, and a special guest of the board was Daniel Vandenberg, ZL2DRV, who was the president of NZART. It was great to have Daniel attend the weekend in person, and thank you, Daniel, for making the effort to travel all the way over from New Zealand. It was very much appreciated. After the AGM, the WIA held its normal open forum, and there was some great discussion around the ACMA five-year spectrum outlook, FISO, class licensing, and then an update on club insurance. Overall, it was an outstanding couple of days with around 220 people that attended the three days. I want to personally acknowledge and thank the Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club and a huge thank you to all those organising committee members, but in particular to Secretary David Neeb, VK4DN, who did an outstanding job to make the weekend a tremendous success. To all those members that travelled to Bundaberg, thank you for supporting the WIA convention and AGM hosted by the Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club. That's it for me this week. And after being away all of last week and the weekend, I'm sure looking forward to staying home this weekend with my family. Can I say a very happy Mother's Day to all those mothers listening today on the broadcast. This has been Scott Williams, WA President, on behalf of the WA Board. Best wishes. This is Linda, BK7QP, with some good news about Alara Grants. Alara is continuing its grant program under the new class licence arrangements. Alara offers a limited number of grants to women and girls applying for a foundation level recognition certificate or upgrading to standard or advanced. There have been some changes in the grants now that the ACMA has reduced charges for the certificate and call sign application. Alara will now not only cover half these costs, but also half the cost of a foundation manual and other charges such as course fees. Just keep all your receipts and make an application once you have your call sign. The grant also includes one year's membership of Alara. For more details and an application form, go to the Alara website, alara.org.au. Lynn VK4SWE has just updated the Alara website. It includes the new grant information, photos from Alara Meet 2023, and some new guides to encourage young beginners in amateur radio. Have a look. alara.org.au from here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now with international news, Jason, VK2 LAW. Hello. Leading this week's international news, researcher says satellites imperil magnetosphere. A researcher in Iceland is calling satellites a hazard to the protective shield around Earth known as the magnetosphere. An American physicist has been stirring concern about the impact of satellite re-entries on Earth's magnetosphere. The scientist, Sierra Salter Hunt, a doctoral candidate at the University of Iceland, writes that magnetic dust generated at the time of satellite re-entry could eventually destroy the planet's protective shield. A concern accelerated in recent years by the proliferation of commercial satellite mega constellations such as the Starlink Network. An article on the Space.com website notes that although meteors are also known to burn up as they enter our atmosphere, their makeup is not the same as the man-made satellites. 
Several media reports say that the research paper's theory have been questioned by other scientists who nevertheless agree that the impact of satellites burning up on re-entry does require further study. FCC proposes $850,000 total fines charging six with piracy. The FCC is taking action against more US radio stations it claims engaged in unlicensed operation. Six broadcast radio stations in Massachusetts have been charged with piracy by the US Federal Communications Commission, which is proposing to levy a total of $850,000 in fines against them. The stations, along with seven operators who were said to be unlicensed, were identified as part of a sweep by enforcement agents in the Boston metropolitan area. The agents conducted the investigations under the Pirate Act, which gives the FCC increased ability to act against pirate broadcasters by authorising fines of as much as $100,000 per violation, up to a total of $2 million. The US Department of Justice is responsible for enforcement and collection of the fines. The Pirate Act, which became law in 2020, is an acronym for Preventing Illegal Radio Abuse Through Enforcement. Marking a 100-year-old rag chew that made history. Two CW ops made history 100 years ago this month, one in Argentina and the other in New Zealand. A two-hour rag chew between the hams was also one for the history books as well as the log books, and indeed that's just where that contact has been recorded. The CW contact between Carlos Braggio, Charlie Bravo 8 and Ivan O'Meara to Alpha Charlie took place on May 22, 1924, setting a world distance record. The fact that the 7,000-mile chat was on 130 metres stunned scientists who believed that such a frequency could never support long-distance radio. The New York Times headline shouted to the world, Radio amateurs talk 7,000 miles for two hours. Argentinian and New Zealander established what is declared a record for non-professionals. Starting on the 18th of May, that history, as recorded by NZART historian Craig Crawford, Zulu Lima 3 Tango Lima Bravo is being celebrated. The New Zealand amateur radio transmitters and the Radio Club Argentina are marking the centenary of this record-setting contact. Many Argentinian amateurs will be signing on the air with the prefix Lima, followed by a number, hoping to exchange greetings with hams in New Zealand. The NZART branch in Gisborne, where Ivan had his QDH, will host an open house celebration, also on the 18th of May, at their radio room at the Eastern Institute of Technology. For the rest of the month, hams from the Gisborne branch will be on the air using call sign Zulu Lima 100 Alpha Charlie. CQ magazine publisher Dick Ross, Kilo 2 Mike Golf Alpha, Silent Key. Long-time amateur radio publisher Dick Ross, Kilo 2 Mike Golf Alpha, has become a silent key. He passed away April 27. In 1960, Ross started working for Cowan Publishing Company and quickly became associate editor for CQ. He was elevated to vice president general manager of the company in 1976, and in this role, he was responsible for all fiscal matters and publishing operations for five publications. As president of CQ Communications, Inc., he was also publisher of multiple magazine titles, including Popular Communications, CQ VHF, CQ Contest, World Radio, Communications Quarterly, CB Radio Magazine, Electronic Servicing and Technology, Modern Electronics, Microcomputer Journal, and Music and Computer Educator. In addition, Ross oversaw the production and publication of CQ Communications books and calendars, the CQ Video Library, and more. We've not heard yet what plans would be made for CQ Magazine's future. Gasper, Echo Alpha 6, Alpha Mike Mike. IARU Region 1 Monitoring Service Coordinator reports that there is a CODAR-like radar transmitting on 25,000 kilohertz centre frequency bandwidth 200 kilohertz and causing interference from 24900 to 24990 kilohertz, so almost the whole 12 metre amateur radio band. The signal is coming from the sea and not the shore. It's believed the signal is most likely coming from the Croatian coast. The signal can be heard daily. The transmissions are lengthy. 
For VK1 WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. We are VK1 WIA. Now, operational news with VK4 FUQ. Felix. Hello there. Since the RSGB Commonwealth Contest in March, a small group, including representatives from Canada, Australia, New Zealand and the UK, has been discussing possible changes that might be made to encourage more participation in the contest in future years. Although confidence is that the contest will be viable in its present form for some time, concern is that fewer Commonwealth participants outside the more highly represented countries has been observed, and it may be appropriate to freshen up the contest. The community are now very keen to hear from regular entrants and also from those who have never entered but might consider doing so in the future. Please complete the questionnaire whose link is in the text edition of this week's WIA National News. It's only open for about a week. Closes Monday, 20 May. Now, contest-wise, 2024. This insured German Radio Society will hold the Don Edwards Memorial Slow Morse next weekend, Saturday 18 and Sunday 19 May. This contest commemorates Don VK2NV, whose operating was mostly exclusively on CW. Don was always willing to assist their amateurs to learn or to improve their Morse code. The contest aims to encourage all amateurs, but especially those who don't usually operate Morse, to take part. Contest rules are simple. Send by hand and receive by ear. No more than 10 words per minute. Past contacts have seen many successful contacts at 5 words per minute or less. Full details on this in George Amateur Radio Society's website, sgars.org. IAIUHF World Championship July 13-14. Starts 0 hours UTC Saturday, ends 23.59 hours UTC Sunday. Trans-Tasman Low Bend Contest July 21st. Yoda Contest 2024. The next session of this year's Yoda Contest will be from 10 hours to 21.59 hours UTC, 21 July on the five classic bands using CW and SSB. August 17, 18. Remembrance Day Contest. It is held on the weekend closest to the 15th of August, the date on which hostilities ceased in the southwest Pacific area. Again, the 2024 contest is 17th and 18th August. 40 for the Lara Contest, and this Lara Contest is always held on the last four weekend of August. Starts Saturday, 25th August, 2024, with over 600 hours UDC. Ends Sunday 26th August 2024 at 05 hours UTC. Oceania Dex Contest. This year's contest will be held October 5 and 12. Dex Window to the World. Rwanda. QRV is 9X2OW from Kigali until May 17 on 160 to 10 metres using CW, SSB, FT8 and FT4. QSL 9X2OW via M0OXO. Special call sign 9H6HG is used by the Malta Amateur Radio League to celebrate the swearing in of Malta's 11th president. Look for activity until the 31st of May on the 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands using SSB, CW, and digital modes. QSL 9H6HG via Logbook of the World, noting that paper QSL cards are not available. Listen throughout the year for the special call sign 9A100RKZ, marking the 100th anniversary of the Radio Club Zagreb, which was founded on the 24th of March 1924 in Croatia. QSL via 9A1ADE, Ireland. Special event call sign EI80MB is active until the 31st of May to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the rescue of 168 German seamen who were rescued from the waters of the Bay of Biscay after a battle between British and German naval forces in 1943. QSL EI-ADMB via Club Logs OQRS or via EI-6AL. Austria. Oscar Echo 100 Romeo Alpha Delta India Oscar is active until the 31st December, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the beginning of regular radio transmissions in Austria in 1924. The station has been recently on the 40-minute band using CW. QSL via the Bureau. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Felix VK 4FUQ Inningham. From here, there and everywhere, 
You've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3 GTV. Hello, first up in worldwide special interest groups, it's astronomy and wireless weather. On May 1st, an extremely powerful solar flare occurred on the sun, which led to a large-scale radio blackout throughout the Pacific region. The flare peaked at 23.46 UTC and lasted 12 minutes. Flares on the sun are a manifestation of magnetic energy that accumulates in its atmosphere and is then released in the form of intense bursts of electromagnetic radiation. They're divided by size into categories, the most powerful of which is X-class, followed by M, C, B and A-class. According to spaceweatherlive.com, the flare on May 1st had a power of M9.53, which is slightly less than the X-class. The strength of the flare was measured by NASA's GOES-16 satellite. HAM SCI to present initial eclipse findings at HAMvention. Initial results of the HAM SCI 2023-24 festivals of Eclipse Ionospheric Science will be presented on May 19th by Nathaniel Frissel, W2NAF, during HAMvention at the Antenna Forum. In addition, HAM SCI will provide numerous forum and booth talks at HAMvention. Worldwide special interest groups, balloons. A PICO balloon launched by the Wallapai Amateur Radio Club will mark one year in orbit on May 19th. The balloon contains a 20-metre whisper beacon from QRP Labs. Overcoming a damaged dipole antenna, telemetry from the balloon was recently received by two stations in Australia, VK5ARG and VK7JJ, first started spotting it with complete reception of the telemetry, altitude, solar panel voltage and temperature. It was still at 50,000 feet, give or take a couple of hundred feet, as the air pressure changes at altitude. The balloon has now started another trip across the Pacific Ocean, heading due east towards South Africa, so they probably won't hear from it for a while. The balloon is a hydrogen-filled 32-inch Yokohama brand Clear Sphere, which are purchased from Japan. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. AMSAT Italia enters into ownership of IO-117 GreenCube Satellite. AMSAT Italia announced their acquisition of the IO-117 GreenCube satellite. This move averts the satellite decommissioning process that was signposted for last February by transferring the legal responsibility of the satellite from the Italian Space Agency to AMSAT Italia. GreenCube is a hugely popular amateur radio digipeter, and it's the first ham radio satellite to operate in a medium Earth orbit. Orbiting at an altitude in excess of 5,800 kilometres, it has a very large footprint. Worldwide Special Interest Group's IOTA. Activation of VI-60 IOTA coming to an island near you. Grant VK5GR is coordinating the activation of a special event call sign celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Islands on the Air program this year in Australia. The call sign will be VI-60 IOTA. As part of the activation, Grant is looking to have the call sign be active from as many different VK IOTAs as possible. So far, that includes OC-171, OC-001 and OC-261, with plans for OC-139, OC-136 and hopefully others in the works. Each activation window can be as long or short as the respective operators can offer. If they want to book the call sign for windows of six hours over a weekend or an afternoon, that's fine. To book, you just need to email iotacheckpoint at gmail.com. You can then put the call sign on air, making sure to broadcast which iota you're located in. The only requirement is that all contacts are logged in an ADIF format, and the log is sent by email to iotacheckpoint at gmail.com within 24 hours of the conclusion of the activation. Each planned activation is added to the VI-60 IOTA QRZ page along with its IOTA designator, so that people know where the call is coming from at any given time. QSL cards are being handled through Charles M0OXO as the event QSL manager. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Maritime. The US retired the Coast Guard cutter Ingham more than three decades ago, but the decorated ship's radio room came back to life recently with its computer screens blinking with colour-coded blocks of numbers and letters. Two experienced radio men, both now in their 80s, donned headphones and manned the computers and radio dials, sending out calls, making contacts, and communicating with people by voice and Morse code all over the world. 
New Zealand, Thailand, Japan, France, all 50 states of the USA, and more. But they weren't discussing military operations or classified missions. No, this was a party, an amateur or ham radio party. In the jargon of these radio operators, it was the FQP Florida CUSO party, and it took place over two days for 10 hours each day, with local ham radio operators manning the station in the Ingham's radio room, making contact with as many people as they could in as many far-flung places as possible. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Military. The RSGB National Radio Centre will be operating special event call sign GB2DAY to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings during the Second World War. The station will be active between the 6th and 9th of June. In addition, volunteers will be hosting the special demonstration station GB1SOE. SOE is a special operations executive on Saturday the 15th of June. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Rescue Radio, Storms and Tornadoes, Amateur Radio Ready. Strong storms and reports of at least 60 tornadoes have wreaked havoc in the central U.S. for nearly two weeks. Homes and businesses across Nebraska, Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri and Iowa were destroyed and power is still down for more than 30,000 residents. President Joe Biden declared a major disaster exists in Oklahoma, making federal aid available to those affected by severe storms. Section Manager of the ARRL Iowa Section, Lelia Garner, WA0UIG, reported that in Iowa they've moved from response to recovery. She said they recently networked at a central Iowa ham fest to building emergency communications capacity primarily through the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, ARIS. ARIS resources include personnel, experience, meeting, training, communications equipment and operating trailers. She added the opportunity to share their experience and knowledge gained in the field has been critical to supporting ARIS in Iowa and that awareness is the best tool, stressing that amateur operators and ARIS members work to help the National Weather Service and other served agencies in order to make their work and the community safer. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. Mills on the Air. The Mills on the Air event is held annually in May and is coordinated by the Denby Dale Radio Society in the United Kingdom. It coincides with the National Mills Weekend run by the Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings. This is not a contest but rather an opportunity of promoting the hobby of amateur radio and at the same time promoting the preservation of heritage. Mills of all kinds around the world, including Australia, are currently on air over this weekend, including in VK3 at Smeaton where the Bendigo Amateur Radio and Electronics Club, Barrick, is operating at Anderson's Mill with the special call sign of VI3 Mills today and tomorrow on HF frequencies 7.115 and 3.655 MHz and 2 meter repeaters VK3RWA and VK3RCV. An EQSL card is available on request by sending your QSO details to VI3 Mills at Barrick, that's big A-R-E-C, Dot net dot au. Anderson's Mill features displays of heritage crafts, machinery and historical information along with a huge water wheel and steam engines plus lots more with free admission. More details and links can be found in the text version of this broadcast on the news page at wia.org.au. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Cole, VK3GTV. Wishing all mums... A happy Mother's Day. 2024, it's at 8. National Volunteer Week happens this month, Monday the 20th to Sunday the 26th. In VK2, June 8 and 9, it's the Oxley Region Amateur Radio Club's Field Day. And June 8 and 9 in VK5, Australian Fox Hunting Championships at Mount Gambier. Caboolture Radio Club Hamfest, July 11. And we thank VK7JEA for that info. VK3, it's Bendigo Amateur Radio and Electronics Club Radio Fest, August 18. The Gold Coast Ham Fest in VK4 on the Gold Coast at Narang Country Paradise Parklands. That happens October 13. VK5 Amateur Radio Experimenters Group Radio and Electronic Sale, Saturday, October 26. Spark Rosebud Radio Fest, November 17 at Eastbourne Primary School at Rosebud. And, as I mentioned at the top of the news, Tasmanian Ham Conference, November 2 and 3 in Hobart. This to be held at the Sandy Bay campus of UTAS. The Friday night is a social barbecue held at the Reese Club Rooms. And then Saturday and the first half of Sunday, a fun-filled conference of presentations and activities centred around innovation in amateur radio. 
Now till next we meet, I am Graham VK4BB. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.